about 300 years ago, people like Leibniz were interested in the same problem that I'm interested in, which is how do you formalize sort of everyday discourse? And Leibniz had the original idea, you know, he was originally trained as a lawyer, and he had this idea, if he could only reduce all law, all legal questions to matters of logic, he could have a machine that would basically describe every, you know, answer every legal case, right? He was unfortunately a few hundred years too early. So what he tried to do was to make a formalized representation of everyday discourse. For whatever reason, for the last 300 years, basically people haven't tried to do that. There's, it's an almost completely barren landscape. There was this period of time in the 1600s when people talked about philosophical languages. Leibniz was one, a guy called John Wilkins was another, um, and they tried to you know, break down human thought into something symbolic. People haven't done that for a long time. These areas, one thing you have to understand, these areas like philosophy and so on, are, they're on the harder end. I mean, things like, a good example, typical example, you know, I want to have a piece of chocolate, okay? The, in Wolfram language right now, we have a pretty good description of pieces of chocolate. We know all sorts of, you know, we probably know 100 different kinds of chocolate, we know how big the pieces are, all that kind of thing. The I want part of that sentence, we can't do that right now. Let's say we had the omnipotent AI, so to speak, that was able to, you know, where we turn over the control of the central bank to the AI, we turn over all these other things to the AI. Then the question is, we say to the AI, now do the right thing. And then the problem with that is, and this is why I talk about, you know, creating AI constitutions and so on, we have absolutely no idea what do the right thing is supposed to mean. And philosophers have been arguing about that, you know, utilitarianism is an example of that, uh, of one of the answers to that, although it's not a complete answer by any means. You think to yourself, what should the AI constitution actually say? So first thing you might think is, oh, there's going to be, you know, something like Asimov's laws of robotics. There's going to be one, you know, golden rule for AIs. And if we just follow that golden rule, all will be well. Okay? I think that that is absolutely impossible. And in fact, I think you can even sort of mathematically prove that that's impossible. Basically, as soon as you have a system that shows computational irreducibility, I think it is inevitable that you have, a, of have unintended consequences of things, which means that you never get to just say, put everything in this one very nice box. You always have to say, let's put in a patch here, let's put in a patch there, and so on. A version of this, much more abstract version of this, uh, Gödel's theorem. Gödel's theorem is trying to talk about integers. It says, start off with Piano's axioms. Piano's axioms, you might say, and Piano thought, describe the integers and nothing but the integers. Okay? So anything that's provable from Piano's axioms will be true about integers and vice versa. Okay? What Gödel's theorem shows is that you can, that will never work, that there are an infinite hierarchy of patches that you have to put on to Piano's axioms if you want to describe the integers and nothing but the integers. And I think the same is true if you want to have a legal system effectively that has no bizarre unintended consequences. So I don't think it's possible to just say, you know, if you, when you're describing something in the world that's complicated like that, I don't think it's possible to just have a small set of rules that will always do what we want, so to speak. I think what will happen is it'll be much like human laws. It'll be a complicated thing that gets progressively patched. And so I think it's, it's some, and these ideas like, um, you know, oh, we'll just make the AIs, you know, run the world according to, you know, Mills, you know, John Stuart Mill's idea, it, it's not gonna work. So, which is not surprising because philosophy has, has, has made the point that it's not, as easy, not an easy problem for the last 2000 years. And they're right, it's not an easy problem.